This is Collected Clan, episode 22. We lost friendships, we lost loved ones, we lost time and opportunity, and perhaps we'll never get any of those things back. But we're here. Welcome to Collected Clan. I'm your host, Gregory Byerline, bringing you conversational biographies, or audio portraits as they've been called recently, of relatable people with real stories of triumph and tragedy, plus successes and setbacks. Stories about everyday people making their mark. I've met a lot of people in my lifetime, and many people come and go. But these are the company you keep. 2020 was a circus disaster for sure, but the big top didn't fully catch fire. Trapeze artists fell, and the resilient got back up to take another swing. And that's what this episode is about. To borrow from what you'll soon hear, but if you're breathing today, you've made it this far, and that's no small thing. It's incredible, even. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, while you listen, kick back and soak it in. So let's get started. First up is my friend, Terry Peterson. And in 2020, I have learned a lot of things about myself. Uh, I spent a lot of time as a running career trying to be fast and being very disappointed in myself that I wasn't fast. But in 2020, I discovered something about myself that I'm not fast, but I can outlast. And I've tapped into this new energy that's so incredible that I have learned that I can just kind of get cozy with discomfort and just kind of be in that space and know that I'm going to be there for a long time. And I think being a person who has not been fast has definitely helped me with being okay with being out there for a long time. And once I've learned that some of these races do take a long time, I've kind of felt more comfortable with that and I've been able to accomplish a lot of things. And in 2021, I'm seeing what else I can accomplish. So uh, here's to a great 2021, and I hope that everyone is able to find a silver lining in 2020. Well done, Terry. I'm glad to have shared many of those miles and experiences with you, and it's been exciting to see it all kick in. And incidentally, Terry can be heard in episode 19, where she gave the first known recording by a female of Mary's Magnificat, read in Hebrew. It's so cool. Next up is another running buddy, Dave Talbot. Well, a lot of things were canceled in 2020. Running was not. Trails were still open, and getting outside was still encouraged. I'm thankful to have still been able to participate in multiple adventure runs and races this year. Some of the highlights of this year include the Chattanooga 50, a run from Newfound Gap to Mount McCont in the Smokies, a 20-mile Barkley Loop run at Fresno Head State Park, a mid-state mile last man standing race, Cumberland Plateau Stage Race, Georgia Jewel, and the Tennessee Mile 12-Hour Race. I ended the year with the Moonshine Runner Society, hitting my mileage goal of 2020. It wasn't all bad in 2020, and I'm looking forward to see what 2021 brings. Dave crushed his running goals this year, and I also shared many of those miles and experiences with him. He valiantly wears the cape of Captain Consistency, and he's winning in that regard. Well done on knocking out 2,020 miles in the year 2020. That's awesome. Next up is my friend Keith Cartwright, calling in from Virginia. Yeah, so my name is Keith Cartwright, and my 2020 story is this, I guess. Back in March, um, March of this year, I headed from my home here in Virginia to uh, Grand Lakes, Kentucky, or Grand Rivers, Kentucky, to run the land between the lakes, 23K. I've gone over there several years, kind of at the beginning of the race, the beginning of the year. It's a kickoff race for me. So at that time, there were a few cases of COVID going around. Some of the concern was just starting, but I had no idea when I headed over there to run that race, that it would be the last live race that I'm aware of that happened anywhere um, nearby over the foreseeable future. I never ran another live race until um, September of this year, many months later, the Georgia Jewel. And the Georgia Jewel really was my ultimate running goal for the year. I had struck out on that race twice in previous years. So, All of my running really was pointed towards the Georgia Jewel in September. And coincidentally, in the year of COVID, 
I went to the Georgia Jewel, and I finished that race. I conquered it. After striking out two previous times, I conquered the 35 COVID edition 37-mile Georgia Jewel. But I look back on this year, and there were so many challenges that none of us saw coming. Certainly me. There's been personal challenges in my life. And running has been my way of kind of dealing with it. Um, certainly because of COVID, working from home, I had more opportunity to run. But this year, I just went out today, and I ran. I ran my final miles of this COVID 2020 year. And with the miles today, I ended up with 2,262.7 miles to be exact. My previous high miles was last year at 1,300, which was 500 more than the previous high the year before. And, you know, I just look back and this has been a, a challenging year and it's hard to kind of see, you know, even now it's still challenging. It's hard to see a good direction in the future. Some days you listen to the news and it's hard to figure out where we're going. And I think as I look back on my, my running life and just see those miles starting to add up, and those miles to me represent far more than just physical miles. They represent races and friendships and the people, the people more than the miles that I leaned into this year, my running friends, my running support who really helped me through not just COVID, but all sorts of challenges. But to be able to look back and see those numbers go from 500 miles and then 800 miles and 1,300 miles and then finally this year, 2,200 plus miles um, in, a, in a time when it's really hard to see much good coming, um, it, it's helpful through running to be able to look back and, and just see that there are there is positive momentum um, in my life, you know, and I just lean into that and that's really my hope and you know, like I said, running represents a lot of support in my life. So I lean into those miles. I lean into that support. And I trust there's there's good coming in 2021, just like there was good in 2020 if we stop and, and look back at it. So appreciate the chance to share. Thanks, Keith. That's a lot of miles, a lot of time on feet. And now here's Bradley Ford, a familiar voice from episodes 11 and 13. His episodes still remain among the most downloaded, and if you've not heard those yet, give them a listen. Episodes 11 and 13, available at the same place you're listening to this episode. Brad owns and operates an event entertainment company that was deeply impacted by quarantine and cancellations. Hear how he made it all happen in 2020. Hey, Brad Ford here, calling about 2020. What a crazy year it's been. A year of a lot of loss and lost business and even though I hate the word pivoting and figuring out new things to do, but it was also a year of a lot of successes. I was really happy. Video was something that had always been a hobby and something I wanted to transition into. And this year, instead of having an event every month or so, we were actually filming pretty much every week of this entire calendar year, which for me was just a great sign that this is something that could be sustainable for us moving forward. We got to do a lot of live streaming, hosting events like virtual horse racing, virtual casinos, hosting board meetings, hosting online holiday parties, um, and not even just DJing, but just doing a lot of different things like trivia. And it was ended up being a lot of fun and a learning curve, you know, just learning new things, reaching out and, you know, being able to still connect with people, even though it was through a computer screen. My favorite part of 2020 was being able to end the year with one of the biggest events we'd ever done, uh, which was a drive-through event celebrating Amazon drivers, where we had a huge fairground area. And so we were able to bring in 28 performers, we had DJs, we had music that was in different stations across over 100 yards of ground. And uh, people, Amazon drivers would come through and they would pull their cars into a life-size car-size green screen and do pictures. And then they would, you know, drive through and see all the performers and they would get gifts from Amazon. It was just a fun way to end the year um, and a nice way to end December, which was you know, all the corporate stuff had canceled. 
um, because of COVID. So it was really nice to have this huge event in December to look forward to. And so it's been a crazy year. Looking forward to 2021. I know nothing magically changes overnight, but I think just watching those numbers change on the dial uh, gives us a sense of hope. And uh, I think that's what Nashville needs right now. And that's what I'm looking most forward to is the hope and the challenge that comes ahead of it. Me too, brother. Finally, we hear again from my friend David Myers, whom you'll recognize from way back in episode two. Man, this year took a toll on us, didn't it? Uh, We survived a financial crisis, a political crisis, a racial crisis, and a pandemic. And that's just too much for anybody to endure. We, We lost this year. We lost ourselves. We lost our identity. We lost our witness. We lost friendships. We lost loved ones. We lost time and opportunity. And perhaps we'll never get any of those things back. But we're here. We're now. We're breathing. And if you're breathing today, you made it this far. And that's no small thing. It's it's incredible, even. So I want you to know that if you're listening to this, um, your story isn't over. And the last word has not been spoken over you. And everything you've experienced is part of your story, so own it. The good and the bad, the light and the dark, all of it. Through all of our shared experiences and all of our collective pain, we are still at the forefront of the rest of our lives. And we've been given another chance to right our wrongs, to usher in hope, to light our lamps, and to continue to facilitate human flourishing and to leave it better than how we found it to continue to move forward for we are all of us a part of the reconciliation of all things so for what it's worth happy new year gregory i love you guys i love your family and i hope you're well and hopefully i'll see you soon god bless there you have it I hope you found triumphs among the tragedies and successes despite the setbacks. 2020 was a circus indeed. In March, my work team retreated to our homes with a 30% pay cut while all of our retail locations were closed, except for our company website that soared. That's our department. Several of my running friends shared here how many of our races were canceled. One that wasn't canceled is the one I started training for in January. That race was the Georgia Jewel 50 Miler, which I entered to celebrate my 50th birthday. This race is directed by Jenny and Franklin Baker, who you can hear in episode 7, and what an experience it was. So glad they were able to adjust their plans to safely run this event and welcome their trail family back into the woods. I created a recap video called 50 Miles for 50 Years that you can see. Pop over to YouTube and enter 50 miles for 50 years Gregory Byerline in the search box to see that recap. The woods became a respite for many of us. Whether training for something big or simply breathing fresh air with family, a simple return to nature is a win in itself. Even more importantly, I deeply enjoyed spending extra time at home with Megan and our kids. Working from home has become the new normal for us and I'm certain we're all better for it. Less commute time, less pollution and environmental impact, more time with family. We made it through 2020 virtually unscathed, except perhaps for the 30% salary cut. And even this was temporary because my company pivoted so well during the economic downturn that they graciously made up for that lost income with full back pay right before Christmas. So take that, 2020. We made it out alive. Even a December 30th case of the Rona for yours truly didn't knock us down for long. So it delayed the release of this recap episode by a few days. No biggie. We still made it through, and here it is. We're ready for you, 2021. Let's do this together. And on that note, a big thank you to my friends Worldwide Groove Corporation for this show's original music. It's called Mimosa from their album Chilodesiac Lounge Volume 1. Check out more of their music at WorldwideGrooveCorporation.com. Thanks for listening. Now go be you. 
2021 needs you.